And this creates really high stakes, preserving innocent alien life and thereby also making an alliance possible with powerful aliens, making sure they don't want revenge, as they could endanger many innocent people, and the lives of our heroes are also at stake. Also, Kav here is really clearly made the villain as he is endangering the lives of innocent of the innocent crew, as well as the aliens, threatening a war with powerful aliens or threatening to kill anyone who opposes him. And he has well explained motivations. He's paranoid of the creatures down there, as he is a Navy SEAL, so he fears the Russians, and when it turns out they are aliens, uh, 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 as he is already suspicious of them causing to the stop the crash and uh, them looking at the war, he fears them, especially when he's cut off from his train of command and he becomes a lot more aggressive because he suffers from high pressure nervous syndrome. And so this is a really well explained conflict. Coffee is unwilling to listen to anyone and wants to kill anyone that opposes him, so the crew is to stop him. And you know what else is well explained? The conflict between Protestants and Roman Catholics. They believe that the Bible is all that is necessary for faith, that Catholics, due to pagan influences, deny the sufficiency of scripture. All those people should be crucified. The apostles for a long time didn't have a New Testament, they simply followed church doctrine. A Protestant claimed the Bible mentions no equality between scripture and church tradition. That is true, it just mentions church tradition. The Bible never mentions the Bible. The New Testament consists of works written by various apostles that were canonized centuries later by the Catholic Church, and Protestants claim they are the word of God. Um, no. No, 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 they are the word of Matthew, John, Paul, Marcus, Lucas. I mean, they are differing accounts of the same events. Would God really remember things differently uh, uh, on different moments? That Would he really give different revelations? You dumb idiot. I will murder you. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't this really tire propaganda shoehorn joke getting incredibly old? Well, I already quit drinking. One can only do so much at once. So you win some, you lose some. And at least I'm not a heretic. So tuck it. Also then hippie spies on them, which makes sense that he's now even more paranoid after they acted very aggressive about the fact they had an atomic bomb there. And they discovered this, and then they decided to take the website on them and lock them up, which is really smart, as they were already suspicious of each other and now hippie spying on them. So they are sure that they can't trust them, and at this point it's also very unpredictable how they're going to escape. And it turns out one of the seals is against Coffee's plan, as he's sane and an individual thinker, which is really clever that within uh, uh, a lot of uh, si crazy situations like this, there's often one individual does go crazy not everyone obeys the chain of command although a lot of people do as one of the seals does that's very three-dimensional it's real life not everyone follows their crazy leader so then it is logical coffee takes his gun as he cannot be trusted so he wants him to be unarmed now you could also kick him in the balls but that would be inhuman yeah i'm still trying because the people to the church say that before i'm baptized i need to stop being a sadist ales i i mean, I mean servants of the apostles apostolic succession which i unfortunately have to obey because i believe in apostolic succession that kind of blows anyhow so Lindsay tries to reason with the seal which is very believable she's very bossy and a forward and it, it turns out that the guy who is guarding them isn't willing to let them out but it turns out james willis got into a coma earlier woke up and took the car by surprise and this makes sense because when your mixture gets screwed up it doesn't have to do permanent damage so their friend comes to the rescue and coffee he didn't think his plan through enough and people complain that this is a coincidence well yeah all films have some and this film so far too that is very little so then they have to get to the bay from which coffee is going to launch the remote control sub, but he locked the door, which is logical as he was trying to prepare for attacks. So they have to swim to a hatch that will lead them there, which makes sense that as it is a bait, it could be accessed through waters, and this creates a lot of tension as the water is really cold and they could die from the coldness. And one hatch is closed, so Virgil had to swim there alone, which is logical as he's the best swimmer and Cat is scared to swim that far. And as Coffee is close to the door, he has to fight him and he wants to take him by surprise, but Coffee tries to shoot him as he uh, heard him coming, but in a very surprising twist coffee's seal actually took the bullets from the gun which makes sense as he knew it was crazy crazy so wanted him to be unpowered so Virgil gets taken by surprise but is still quickly overpowered which is logical as coffee is a seal lieutenant but Cat takes him by surprise, which is logical as Coffee is caught up in the fight and Cat really cares about him, so decides to help him even when he's really scared. And as he was taken by surprise and faces two people, even as a strong seal, he realizes that one can get help, so decides to get into the sub, which makes sense as he cannot fight two guys, especially when they can get help. And that it is really cool that they can work as a team. And it ain't fascist. No, fascist isn't teamwork. Teamwork isn't automatically wrong. What? The Catholics got me a good therapist. They care about the mentally handicapped. Unlike you. You can't ass shit farts. Fuck you. Fuck you.
Anywho, so they then try to shoot the submarine, but it is too deep, so it won't work. And that is a really nice and smart and very original twist. That's, it is in fact true that bullets are of little use in the water. So Virgil chases him, but cannot get into the sub and tries to tie Big Geek to a pipe with a rope, which is clever that if he cannot get the coffee, then he can just prevent him from launching the nuke. So then the speed of Big Geek gets it, it to break the rope loose, so Lindsay has to come in the sub, which makes sense as she was trained at this, and she grabs it, which was a logical twist that the sub is specifically made for grabbing, and it's very original that we have an underwater submarine fight that's incredibly surprising and smart. Uh, uh, but Coffee hits them, so it breaks loose, which makes sense as he wants to keep it at all costs, and so he chases after them, which is logical as he wants to prevent them from interfering any further. So, so far the plot is incredibly thick, it's incredibly multi-late, and there are very little pro plot holes, and it stays incredibly strong in the third act. And Virgil then uses rocks as the distraction to hit him from the side, and by crashing it against the rock, and through uh, it being forced against the rock, it breaks and shut off, which makes sense as they had fast subs, and it was really clever, Virgil created the distraction to have one size hit and the speed of the sub really could scatter rocks that would ruin his view. So his sub malfunctions on the cliff and he starts falling and the pressure uh, causes the sub to break and kills him which is really clever as depression indeed destroys even metal. That's in fact used way too little in movies. It's uh, uh, often uh, used in uh, science fiction and action movies that conditions in space are incredibly hard and there are often fights on the water but the real dangers of underwater pressure are in fact used very little and this made for a very original and fresh and surprising twist. You know what else crushes metal? Okay, that just makes no sense. Time for more fork pinching. <laughs> Wait, well, I'm actually doing it. You cannot even see it on screen. So the submarine starts leaking, which makes sense as it got really damaged, and with all the damage Virgil only has his suit, so Lindsay needs to be taken through the cold ice water without oxygen, and the plan is to reanimate her as the cold water makes her body slow down and use less oxygen, but she seems to have truly died, and uh, uh, and shocking doesn't even seem to work. And this is incredibly smart and original, as it's true that cold water makes your body go slower, and that therefore it's possible to do long without air, and it's possible to even reanimate people after a long time, and to planfully do this was a very original fresh fresh twist that really took advantage of the setting and it's also incredibly dramatic that it really seems as though she she truly died and they almost give up but she comes back and the reviewer complains the film expects us to believe the drowned come back from the dead but people can be reanimated and this can take long especially when their bodies slow down and South Park found this worth parodying granted so did they with protestantism so all right I'll go sell the scripture I'm a protestant now so should I become a Calvinist or a Lutheran? Which one did South Park parody the most? This is crucial to my religious conscience. So then they have to go down to disarm the bomb, which makes sense as it could fall into the wrong hands or explode. And this really made f for an extra nice addition to the plot that not only did they have to defeat Coffee, but it really had to deal with the aftermaths maths of it and they had to go incredibly deep. And that's also an incredibly fresh element to really have to deal with the dangers of underwater pressure and to deal with bombs underwater. And they have Virgil taking breathing fluid to go down there as he has to go very deep, which makes sense as the bomb fell off the, cli off the cliff, therefore he has to go very far. And they program a mini sub with the same coordinates as the other sub, and that's logic because the sub's coordinates were programmed. He could put them in small keys, so he goes down, and the pressure causes his hands to start to shake, and for him to almost lose it, which is really smart and also dramatic, as pressure can cause someone to go insane, and you can then totally lose your mind and die a very painful and stressful death, as we saw with coffee, and at least he talks to him to get him to focus uh, his mind on giving him mental support, and that could actually work. Mental support can calm someone's nervous system down and help them focus on their very stressful yeah. conditions. I know it often helps me when my hands are shaking, when I cannot take it anymore, when everything is too much, it helps when the last one talks to you. <laughs> I, I, I got you there, didn't I? Newbie, Teresa, you actually think I'm overwhelmed? Unlike you, I'm a competent duct film critic. Yeah, I can watch superhero movies without feeling challenged. Because, you know, I know you think you are a superhero, but wearing panties really has nothing to do with being heroic. Now go, skip, skip, skippity do. Go away, Naomi. Good. Also, when he has to disarm the bomb, there's another really original and smart twist, because he has to cut uh, the blue wire uh, uh, with uh, white on it and not the yellow-black wire, which is difficult as he's looking at it through limited artificial light. And this is really smart, uh, a really smart twist, as with artificial light that is limited, such colors are incredibly hard to distinguish from one another, and, and such situations have not been used a lot before in movies. So this was a very original as well, so he has to do some guessing, but he gets the right one, which makes sense, as he could still 
still see a little and he doesn't have enough oxygen to go back which makes sense as he had limited oxygen as he just had a suit i remember the time that we were fighting aliens me and my friends it, it was a long time ago it was the time that life was so much you know easier we just played football we fought aliens as part of a secret agency murdered a couple of people i kept claiming that jews were secretly aliens in disguise and kept being criticized for being an anti-Semite. And I was like, no, no, come on. They did look incredibly suspicious. They were chanting all these world weird words. And they would be like, that's Hebrew. You should know that. You're a Catholic. By the way, Jesus was a Catholic. And I'd be like, no, no, he was not. Jesus was secretly delivered by an Aryan. Mary was an Aryan in disguise. Nobody needs to forget it. But I'm totally getting off the point. We were secretly fighting aliens. And that drained my friend's suit of oxygen. And he could appreciate the joke. Yeah, it's nice to have a buddy like Turk. Well, to have had one. It was fun that time though. <laughs> then he meets the aliens, which save him. And many compl people complain this film is E.T. when surfing or close encounters of the wet kind. Calling it a bad twist, they are aliens. Saying it makes no sense, aliens whoop you underwater, that it's a really let down twist to a film that's so far at great build up. Even though a lot of people who praised the film criticized this. Although this became a lot less after the special edition release, still a lot of people co kept complaining about it. But one, it was built up in the film that there were strange being down, down there with all these light reflections, them causing technology to sh shut down, and we already saw them appear in controlling water, and we could assume they were probably aliens. This was speculated many times before. It wasn't just out of the blue. Two, what is wrong with underwater aliens? We accept the fact aliens could live in Earth-like conditions, so why not underwater? Living in deep pressure would automatically make them substantially different from humans, so it made perfect sense you could have underwater aliens. We accept all kinds of weird aliens, but there's somehow a ban on underwater aliens? That would be like a ban for aliens in an Indiana Jones movie while you allowed all kinds of other supernatural power. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That actually is different. In my opinion, still good. Don't hate me, but I can at least get that one. This and no other aliens is bad. By the way, that's not this in King of Crystal. I'm not going to defend it right now. I'm just not get, getting into that right now. They were free. They were building up a twist of a mysterious being. And, well, what else could it have been? Aliens are realistic, especially the way they are portrayed here. As having actual things to teach to humans. Also having self-preservation. Being smart enough to understand how humans act. But at the same time, not being all-powerful and omniscient. So, that was just all around very good about it. So, I really find the criticism so far to be very unfair, but it, it trust me, it just gets worse. Four people complain that rips off E.T. and close cuts of the first kind, but again, do I have to repeat my point on originality? Please don't make me do that. No one complains about E.T. being Spielberg ripping off himself, like they did with M. Night Shyamalan. And five, this is actually different from those films by adding many fresh twists. In fact, it's the best alien encounter film ever. Yes, I'm saying that. That just doesn't count. That doesn't count in a bad way. Th that was just non-contact. Haha, <laughs> yeah, no.